Hello, beloved of the Lord. This is Bev Potter. It is July 31st, 2018. I hope the lighting's okay. <laughs> it doesn't look great to me right now, but uh, we're going to carry on. Today I would like to share an experience that I had with the Lord at the beginning, um, early 2000s. And the reason I believe that he gave me this experience is because at that point, Satan was trying to kill me with thoughts of worthlessness. And I was in extreme emotional pain. Now, my husband had gone to see this counselor lady who was doing Theophostics counseling, which is basically prayer-based, uh, Holy Spirit-led counseling. And he'd received uh, some revelation from the Lord that, that was a blessing to him. And I asked if I could go. And he said, sure. So this lady, it was hard to find someone who was doing this Theophostics uh, counseling. It was kind of a new thing at that point, And there weren't many people in Alberta doing it. So this lady was located in Hinton, Alberta, which is in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, maybe 30 to 45 minutes from Jasper. So it was a, it was a lovely drive to get to, to her. And... Um, and as I said, I was in a lot of pain emotionally. And so we just started the session and she uh, just uh, encouraged me to uh, answer some questions and press in a little bit with the Lord uh, until he brought up what he wanted to deal with that day. And this is the result of that. So... I wrote that experience down in the form of a story. So I would just like to read you the story. It's entitled, Oh God, is there something wrong with me? An answer to the question. All right. Small girl. Whenever I'm before the Lord, I'm a very small girl. Small girl crying, so sad. Too many bad things. Why? Why? Afraid to ask the question. Afraid of the answer. So close to breaking. Shattering into countless pieces. Little shards of glass swept away and lost. But the question came anyways, unbidden from the depths. Uncontainable, it broke forth, oh God, is there something wrong with me? I mean, fundamentally wrong with me. Is there something twisted, warped, defective in me? Did you make a mistake? Is that why all these bad things happen to me? Suddenly, in the spirit, she saw the father. Not all of him. He's too big to grasp, to fit into the framework of her mind. But she could see the lower part of his cheek, his shoulder, down one side of his robe to his foot. He had the shape of a man wearing a robe, but he was made of light, glory, like a bright, radiant cloud. As she watched, he took a little piece of his glory, a little piece of himself, his very essence, the very glory of which he is made, enough to fit in the palm of his hand, and turned. And as she watched, it seemed that he carried it over to a workbench, where he began to labor over this little piece of glory. And she watched him mold and shape and change and reform this little creation with single-minded focus and all his heart. And after what seemed like a long time and great effort and care, when he was completely satisfied and when it was exactly what he wanted, he held it up with joy. And the little girl saw it was herself. And she was perfect. 
absolutely beautiful, absolutely glorious, absolutely pure and holy and righteous, absolutely perfect, made in the image of the very essence and substance of her father. Then she watched as the father took this treasure, his precious creation, herself, and lifted it and carried it up across the heavens like a star shining in the night, and he placed her in the world as a gift, a revelation of himself, a light in the darkness. And she saw that the world treated her as it had treated Jesus with abuse and rejection, but not because there was anything wrong with her, but because she radiated the beauty, purity, and innocence of the glory of God. And the darkness in the world rejected the light just as it had rejected Jesus. So she realized that the bad things she had experienced in her innocence did not happen because there was something wrong with her, but because she carried a revelation of the perfection and beauty of God. And the desire of darkness was to snuff it out at all costs. And understanding that Jesus, the perfect one, had experienced all her suffering and more, brought her comfort and the assurance that she was not alone, not defective, not forsaken. And she understood the words of Jesus in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Glory to God, this is his revelation. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14 This is the story of my origin. And I believe it's the story of the origin of all God's children. So the session ended and I had not made plans for accommodations overnight. I was just going to see what was available, but I felt led by the Holy Spirit to go to Jasper, to the Fairmont Hotel. Normally, I would never go there. But the Lord was taking me there that day. And we went to the Fairmont Hotel, and I called my husband. I said, honey, these rooms are expensive. Fortunately, it was off-season, so uh, a little less than, than the height of the season, which was wonderful. It was in the fall or early fall. So he said, sure, just go ahead, stay there, get whatever room you want. And I felt to ask what was their best room. And they said, well, are you looking for amenities or are you looking for a view? And I thought, well, I could get amenities anywhere. This is a profoundly beautiful place. And I thought, I'll, I'll take a room with a view, please. And so they gave me a room. And I went to my room and the entire front wall was glass. The entire thing, it was a vaulted ceiling and the entire wall was a window. And in front of the window, maybe five feet back from the window, was a couch. And so I could lay on that couch and look at the view. And it was breathtaking. It was so beautiful. But I was still in awe at what the Lord had just revealed to me. So I went for a walk first. But I couldn't even focus on on what was around me, it was all that went through my mind was, he said, I'm glorious. He said, I'm glorious. I'm glorious. Then I went back 
to my room and I sat on that couch and I looked and there was the mountains in the background, this beautiful pristine lake in the front with flowers all around it and paths and a forest and the blue sky and fluffy white clouds. And I was just in awe. I said, Lord, this is glorious. This is glorious. And he said, yes, it is glorious. But it doesn't hold a candle. Could you love me? How could this be true? But I knew. And he dispelled the darkness with the truth. And I'm sharing this with you because uh, Chris M. reminded me of this story. And I feel that the Lord would have me share it because he wants you too to have a weapon against the accusations of darkness, saying that you're worthless. Because that is the world's greatest lie. You are far from worthless, so beyond far from worthless. You are his treasure, you are his joy, you are his life, and he loves you with an everlasting May you receive the truth today and know how precious you are to the heart of the Father. <laughs> now, that is not to say that is who I really am, but that is not the fullness of what I'm walking in today. That is our redemption. That is what we're looking forward to. Right now, we're still contending with the flesh. And we still sin. But we don't want to. But he's bringing us to that place. And he wants to redeem us back to who he created us to be. Like Adam before he fell. He was covered in glory. <laughs> That's where we're going. That's what he has for us. So seek him, beloved, with all your heart. Submit your life to him. Give it to him. And he will bring you through into the fullness of your destiny the fullness of who you were created to be. I love you. God bless you. The Lord bless and keep you. Let his kingdom come in our hearts. Fill us, Lord, with your truth. Thank you, Father, for your grace upon us. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Let your name be glorified in all the earth. In the precious name of Jesus.